it is not very warm here in the Midwest right now. It was nice like the last two days, but I totally forgot that it's been really cruddy this whole kind of past two weeks. It's dropped the water temperature down to like a mere mid to kind of highish 40s, which makes it tough to fish dirty, shallow, muddy water. Caught on a cumulative of like three fish this entire weekend. It's not been good. Needless to say, the fishing is tough. I'm gonna take this moment to talk about a few things I wanted to make videos about for quite some time, so. I'm gonna head down to the basement. <sighs> All right, so today, hold on. All right, so like I said, the fishing is um, below par. My uh, confidence is below par, so there's no point being out on the water. Okay, so just a little background knowledge. For those of you guys who don't know, this right here is your traditional Texas rig. We're gonna kind of play off this rig today and kind of morph it so it's good for not only brush and grass but also you know rock and heavy timber like big laydowns. Forget this rig today. We're gonna need something a little bit different in order for an angler like yourself to be more versatile when out in the water. So right here are a few things that you're gonna need in order for this rig to be successfully accomplished. I've got stoppers, my hook, you can choose whatever hook you want, whatever you're most comfortable with. I know some people don't like wide gap EWGs, I do. You're gonna have these guys right here, which is kind of like a JDM product, a product from Japan. It's called the Reigns Sliding Football. And basically what this is, this is gonna kind of tie the whole rig together. So we're just gonna write football. Nice, all right. So these are kind of your main things you're gonna need. Okay, so now we're gonna actually start to rig this up. You're gonna take your tag end of your line and you're gonna find that little punch stopper. What this does is this keeps the weight, the weight being this little reins, sliding football from sliding around. So we're gonna take this tag end, you're going to thread it through. There's a little loop, a wire loop on there. And then once you just put it through the wire loop, you don't have to do anything fancy, just put it through there. You're gonna pull that little rubber stopper off the wire. So I'm now going to take my sliding tungsten weight by reins. Oop, there it is. Now there's a little backside right there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that little backside is cupped and indented. That's not the side you want to put it in. You want to put it in this side. So I'm going to thread my line right through there. Zing. Okay, so as you can see, that weight moves back and forth until it hits the stopper. And that's kind of what you want to achieve with this whole rig. After doing that, you're going to tie your hook, whatever type of hook it may be. I'm gonna tie a polymer knot, not gonna go into that because that's a different video. I'm gonna tie it pretty sloppily, sorry. Okay, there we go, got the hook tied on there. I'm gonna cut the tag end of the hook off. Then uh, we've got all the space in between the stopper and the hook. We're gonna kinda eliminate that space. Slide the stopper all the way down, not all all the way down though. You don't want it to be kinda completely flush. I'll leave about a, a quarter inch, maybe even less than that. A room. I'm gonna actually space out just a little bit so that weight has some room to move and that's what really makes this rig so unique and important when fishing it in between rock and brush. Then I'm gonna take my little bait and rig it like a Texas rig. So you go in head first, boom until it hits the bend of the hook. Then I'm gonna come out like that, slide it down, slide it down. And once I get right here, I turn the hook over and keep pushing in the same motion. As you saw, I turned it over and I kept pushing. I'm gonna bend that bait back just a little bit, just a little bit, <laughs> and uh, put the hook through there. So that, that hook point is flush up against the backside of the bait. I know I rigged it upside down, whoops, whatever. So then you've got kind of this cool looking football head style craw, and you may already be able to tell this looks kind of like a wobble head rig, but the only difference is, is you don't have that that kind of awkward piece of hook sticking out in front of there which can get caught on wood and uh, it's a little bit easier to get through some nastier situations. So if I'm fishing rock, I keep this space open but if I'm fishing brush where I don't want that weight to slide around at all, I'll move it real tight and flush up against there so it's almost like a football head jig but a little bit more versatile being that it's completely weedless. That's the rig in of itself, now I'm going to talk about how I like to fish it. 
So this little rig right here is super effective when you're fishing in between kind of rocky and brush situations because how many times when you're at like a dam or you're at a riprap shoreline and you run across some brush but you can't really throw like that wobble head in there very easily. Granted, I've been able to fish wobble heads in brush and kind of wooden situations is done fine. But with this, you're like 100% good to go. You're not gonna get hung up on anything. And you don't have to go to the back of the boat or the front of the boat to grab a different rod, like a Texas rig rod. This is kind of an all around setup that you can fish on one rod and reel. So the other thing I like to do with this rig too is switch up my presentation. I found that in shad dense lakes, especially this time of year, a good little soft plastic to throw on there is this guy. Granted, I'm gonna be using a bigger hook when I'm throwing this bait, but uh, just for educational purposes, we're gonna put this dude on here. And it's a little swim bait, and you may ask, why would you wanna put a swim bait on a football head shake? It's a great question. And my answer to that question is this time of year, when things start to cool down, the shad become kind of active like the bass. They're getting ready to feed and getting ready to go in hibernation mode. So they're stocking up on like food and algae, whatever shad eat, I don't know, shad are weird. These shad come up super shallow. I mean, they get pushed right up against the bank and they'll actually get right up under dock pylons and they'll go on top of submerged docks just to eat algae, even though the air temperature and the water surface temperature is ridiculously cold. So a little presentation like this, when you flip it into a brush pile or some around some dock pylons, can be super, super deadly and don't overlook this. Some guys won't even think to throw this presentation. I know a lot of you northern dudes up in Wisconsin will throw actually swim baits on a football head style jig. <laughs> oh, shoot. If you guys have any questions about today's video, please be sure to leave a uh, question or comment in the comment section below. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this. It's gonna be getting colder here in the Midwest, so things are gonna start to freeze over. And uh, I get that some of you southern dudes don't really wanna see me catch a little bass through an eight inch hole. I understand that. Oh, I may be doing some travel traveling here in a little bit too, so uh, stay tuned for some open water videos as well. Maybe traveling to North Carolina, Texas, maybe even California, but that's still all up in the air and not set in stone. Please subscribe, I'm not sure if I already said that, but please subscribe, there's gonna be more content like this and some different stuff. I wanna get more creative with this channel being that uh, I'm a little bit more challenged and won't be able to do as much open water fishing as I was able to prior. I think that's about it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of Fishing the Midwest.